वेलकम बैक एज यू मे ऑलरेडी हैव अंडरस्टूड दैट वी ऑलवेज लुक फॉर इंस्पिरेशन टूवर्ड्स सिंगल वेरिएबल कैलकुलस वेन वी वॉन्ट टू डू समथिंग फॉर मल्टी वेरिएबल कैलकुलस सो मैक्सिमा मिनिमा कम्प्यूटिंग मैक्सिमा एंड मिनिमा दे आर नो एक्सेप्शंस सो हियर ऑल्सो वी आर गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस वट इज कॉल्ड अ सेकेंड डेरीवेटिव टेस्ट which is uh, kind of inspired by uh, the uh, the second derivative test that we come across in single variable calculus so let us recall what was that so suppose that d is a subset of r and c is an interior point of d so this was required because we wanted to take derivatives of functions at the point c and suppose that if uh, is a function a real valued function from d to r so uh, so then suppose that f is twice differentiable at the point c and also we have the condition that f prime c is equal to 0 so then we have two conditions so the first one says that if f double prime c is less than 0 then f has a local maxima at c and if f double prime c is bigger than 0 then f has a local minima at c so so for in order to have local maxima we need f prime c to be equal to 0 and f double prime c to be less than 0 and to in order to have local minima we should have if double f prime c is equal to 0 and f double prime c uh, strictly bigger than 0 now uh, what should be a two dimensional analog so we have uh, now seen that if uh, a two a uh, function in two variable uh, has a Uh, local maxima or a local minima at a point c inside the domain uh, or at a point ab inside the domain then the gradient of this function at the point must be equal to 0 0 compared to um, f prime c is equal to 0 in the case of single variable calculus now we must understand uh, what could be a natural analog for the second derivative so this is what uh, Uh, consi- uh, so this is what uh, what is something that we are going to uh, discuss in this video uh, so uh, let us go forward to what is known as second derivative test or second partial derivative test for uh, for functions in two variables so as always uh, we have a domain d and suppose that a b a comma b is a is an interior point of the domain and d is a subset of r2 so suppose um, that if is a function from d to r that satisfies the following properties so what are the properties suppose that all the partial first order partial derivatives exist at the point ab and are also continuous in a neighborhood of ab furthermore all the second order partial derivatives exist at the point ab and are continuous in a neighborhood of ab and uh, moreover we have the property that if is a critical point so in this case since if x and if y exist at a neighborhood so it must exist at the point uh, ab which is mentioned here and in such a case if uh, ab has to be a critical point then the gradient must be equal to 0 so now here comes our second derivative test what we are going to do is as follows so we define a function h ab h of ab which is given by f x x ab minus f y y ab minus f x y ab whole square so this is the function that we, so this is the quantity that we are going to use uh, and uh, it is uh, often easy to remember it in this way so we write a matrix and we write uh, its determinant the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix so what is the matrix so you take f x x ab f x y ab ideally you should have written f y x ab but because of mixed partial derivative theorem so it turns out that f x y ab uh, is equal to f y x ab so well, let us write f x y ab and here f y y ab so and you take determinant so this is a very easy way of uh, remembering uh, the function or uh, the quantity h of ab so here is our uh, second partial derivative test if h is bigger than 0 and then we have two cases in the first case if h so h meaning i want to mean that h of ab 
and of course here also the same if h of a b is bigger than 0 and if x x a b is less than 0 then f has a local maxima at the point a b and if f uh, if h of a b is bigger than 0 and if x x a b is bigger than 0 then uh, one can prove that f has a local minima at the point a b now we may ask that uh, why what is so special about f x x and what is so uh, and why are we not using f y y the answer is you may use both so if you look at this expression so what do we have h a b is strictly bigger than zero that will imply that uh, or that will imply that if x x a b times f y y a b minus if uh, x y a b whole square is bigger than zero now this is a non-negative quantity so what we have is that if x x a b times f y y a b is bigger than zero what this shows us is following so it shows us that in such a case if x x and if y y will have the same sign so if f x x is positive at the point a b then if y y must also be positive at the point a b similarly if, if x x is negative at the point a b then if y y will be negative at the point a b so you may choose whatever you want to do i have chosen to take f x x but you are free to use if y y in this uh, in this case now what happens if h is less than zero in particular h of a b is less than zero then one can show that f has a saddle point at a b so a b is a saddle point of f so this is going to be very useful uh, and we are going to illustrate this with a couple of examples so let us uh, go slowly through the examples before we finish the video so first i have taken this function f of x y is given by x to the power 4 minus 4x square plus y square so we want to determine the local maxima and local minima so of course the function is from r2 to r so r2 is our domain of the function so uh, in order to uh, in order to compute the local maxima or local minima what we must do is that we must calculate what are the critical points so in order to do, do that we must calculate what are the first order partial derivatives so what are the first order partial derivatives this is given by 4x cube minus 8x square so 4x cube so this term gives me 4x cube this term gives me 8x and similarly uh, what is the uh, partial derivative with respect to y this is also this is 2y so then we can also compute what are the second order partial derivatives so second order partial derivatives you have to uh, so in order to calculate fxx you have to uh, take uh, derivative of this function with respect to x uh, so and it turns out that this is 12x square minus 8 if xy so if i differentiate this function with respect to y we get zero and uh, if y y at the point x y is equal to 2 so all these functions all these functions are continuous so we can apply uh, we can apply uh, our second derivative test without any problem at any points so okay we want to compute what are the critical points so in order to compute the critical points i must equate this to zero and i must equate this to zero so if we solve this so we get uh, if we try to solve this we get this as a final equation x times x square minus 2 equal to 0 which implies that either x equal to 0 or x equal to square root 2 or x equal to minus of square root 2 on the other hand if i equate f y x y equal to 0 then we are going to get y equal to 0 so what are the critical points the critical points are given by 0 0 so 0 0 0 under root 2 0 and minus square root of 2 0 so these are the three critical points now let us try to uh, see what uh, goes on at these points so we have determined the second order partial derivatives and we are going to use the information over here so what happens in the x direction 
so at this three point so i have tabulated this information over here so so i have taken zero zero here so you can see that if you want to compute fx x at the point zero zero what you are going to get is that this is zero so everything will boil down to be equal to minus eight and uh, if you forget about the second uh, partial derivative test for multivariable calculus you can at least see that from uh, from our single variable calculus that along x-axis we have a local maxima here so max means local ma local maxima on the other hand if y y so we have seen that if y y is a constant function so this is always going to be equal to 2 no matter what are the points that you are going to take so this is very easy to analyze if y y 0 0 is 2 so along y direction if uh, f has a local minima at the point y equal to 0 f has a local minima at the point y equal to 0 so whatever point you are going to take it is going to work so so for example if we look at this point 0 0 so you see a contrasting uh, contrasting feature that along x direction this function has a local maxima along y direction this function has a local minima so what we expect uh, from what we have seen in our previous video that this point 0 0 is going to be a saddle point now what happens at the point square root 2 comma 0 so you have to compute what is fxx square root 2 comma 0 so what is fxx square root 2 comma 0 so you have to uh, replace x by square root of 2 so 12 times 2 minus 8 so 12 times 2 is 24 minus 8 this is going to be 16 and similarly if i put minus of square root 2 this is all uh, this is also going to be uh, uh, equal to 16 so these terms are positive these terms are positive so uh, along x direction we have minimum local minima so in this two uh, points in the case of these two points we have local minima at the direction of uh, uh, in the x direction local minima in the y direction in the case of this point also we have a local minimum uh, in x direction and local minima uh, in y direction but it is not enough to uh, to assert that f has uh, local maxima and local minima at these points I will show you in uh, some other examples that it is certainly not the case. It might so happen that uh, a function has uh, local minima uh, in, a, in uh, uh, both the x direction and y direction, but uh, it is uh, actually a settled point. But let me uh, let me see first. Let us see first what happens in the case of these examples. In this example. So we uh, now use the second partial derivative test. So we have to compute the second partial derivatives which we had computed um, before, which we had computed before, and uh, we have to we have to uh, check what is h of zero zero, h of root two zero, and h of minus uh, root two zero. So as it was indicated, if we uh, if we put h if we want to compute h of 0 0 it turns out to be equal to minus 16 and from the second derivative test this is a saddle point this we have already understood from the table but what happens in the other cases so h root 2 comma 0 turns out to be equal to 32 which is bigger than 0 h of minus root 2 comma 0 also turns out to be equal to 32 which is bigger than 0 and consequently we have local minima at these two points so i hope that you understand this example so let us look at another example so here what i have done is that i have taken this function f of x y to be equal to x square plus y square minus 4 x y so what is the, what are the first partial derivatives so if x x y is given by 2 x minus 4 y if y x y is given by 2 y minus 4 x in order to compute the critical points in order to compute the critical points uh, in this example uh, you have to solve for these two equations uh, 2 x minus 4 y equal to 0 and 2 y minus 4 x equal to 0 and the solution is easy you can see that x y is equal to 0 0 so 0 0 is the is the only critical point that uh, this function has so we have to check whether uh, if it is a local maxima or a local minima 
what a saddle point so again uh, instead of making the table let us uh, look at what happens in the x direction and in the y direction rather informally so we see that uh, fx uh, so what is fx fx is uh, 2x minus 4y uh, at the point uh, 0 0 it is going to be equal to 0 fy 0 0 uh, is also going to be 0 because these are critical points so uh, what are uh, fxx so what is fxx so fxx is equal to 2 if yy is equal to 2 that you can uh, derive from this two uh, these two equations and what is f of xy this is equal to minus 4 so f of xy is equal to minus 4 this is a constant this is constant for all the values all the tuples xy in r2 so what we have seen that we have critical points uh, and so fx equal to 0 at the point 0 0 and fxx is uh, bigger than 0 so this we have just seen so what we have is that along x direction we have a local minima along y direction we also have a local minima because we have seen that fxx is equal to 2 and fyy is also equal to 2 just here so this uh, information were derived from uh, calculus of one variable but again as I have mentioned that it is not enough uh, to uh, this is not enough information to claim that f has a local minima at the point 0 0 for that we have to use the uh, use the second partial derivative test or second derivative test whatever you want to call it so we have to com compute what is h of 0 0 so what is h of 0 0 so fxx 0 0 minus f uh, times fyy 0 0 minus fxy 0 0 square so fxy fxx 0 0 is equal to 2 fyy 0 0 is equal to 2 minus fxy 0 0 this we have computed to be equal to minus 4 we just plug in this information here and we can see that this is going to be a negative quantity and by the assertion of the second derivative test we can see that 0 0 is a subtle point so uh, as i have just mentioned in the previous video that it is not enough to have local minima uh, uh, along both the axis x axis and y axis we do need to have more information in order to uh, see the whole situation we finish this video and the discussion on maxima and minima for this final example so so we compute uh, so we take this uh, example f of x y equal to x y x times y so uh, in order to compute the critical points what we have to do we have to compute the first order partial derivatives so what is the first what are the par first order partial derivatives f x is given by the function y and f y of x y is given by uh, x so if we want to compute f x x at uh, a point x y this is going to be zero f y y at a point this is also going to be zero and what is f x y at the point x y so we differentiate this by uh, with respect to y and we are always going to get one at any rate uh, if uh, in order to compute the critical points we have to solve for uh, these two equations y equal to 0 x equal to 0 and the only critical point that we get by solving these two equations is the origin so we have to evaluate this expression h0 0, 0 that we have mentioned in our second, uh, second partial derivative test and this turns out to be equal to minus 1 and consequently 0 0 is a saddle point so this finishes our discussion on maxima minima or at least local maxima minima in the case of functions of two variables.